now we're going to go back to this exactly. historic space flight, Virgin Galactic. Richard Branson, the billionaire founder of that company, on board. And I want to bring in uh, Fox News correspondent Jeff Paul uh, to give us an update on what are we, tell us what we're looking at right now. Uh, well, it, it is a historic moment. That's exactly what you're looking at right now, Howie. Um, an incredible moment for not only space, but for space tourism as uh, Sir Richard Branson takes a giant leap forward for, for many people who have hopes and dreams to, to reach the very edges of space. Uh, you know, a few moments ago, there was sort of a gasp out here, and you could hear cheers down when that rocket, the space plane, decoupled and was released from the plane that took it up to 50,000 feet and that rocket just shot straight up in the air and you could see the stream as it went up into the air and it's just hard not to be excited and hard not to smile when you see something like that. Uh, the live feed of what exactly happened uh, didn't go quite as planned. It was hard to kind of see the crew in there once they reached the uh, moment where they were kind of weightless and floating around. We saw a brief moment of that but now we do know that they are getting back in their seats and that they are heading uh, back down to earth so this is one of the more critical moments when we wait and see if Unity 22 will make that nice, safe, smooth landing that we have seen uh, Virgin Galactic uh, do in previous uh, missions to the yeah. edges of space here. And that's what I want to ask uh, and you And that's about. what uh, everyone here is waiting for. Right. But um, there's enormous public interest in this, but isn't that in part because Richard Branson himself at the age of 71, this guy who's uh, had some death-defying episodes in the past, is on board and it's been cast by the media as kind of this battle of the billionaires because nine days from now, Jeff Bezos, the Amazon founder, will go up in his own Blue Origin rocket. Isn't that uh, what's driving in part the enormous um, public oh, attention? part of that, the, the race to space, certainly there's a, an interest in the billionaire race to space. But uh, I can tell you from the people who were out here, we just heard a big boom, which we're assuming is the, the sonic boom uh, as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. I think it's just excitement right now. And I think uh, for, for people who are into space, it's good to see the competition uh, between people like Branson and Bezos, who is going to be uh, taking a similar flight uh, nine days from now in West Texas. So that, that's certainly a big part of it. But uh, you need eyeballs and you need interest in order to keep this going. And Howie, if you're, if you're wondering, uh, uh, Sir Richard Branson's already sold 600 tickets to do this experience, this very experience, uh, at a tune of a quarter million dollars a seat. So there is definitely a lot of interest. Someone like me obviously can't afford that, but you can tell that people want to experience this. Well, maybe they'll let journalists ride along at some point. And, and Bezos sold a ticket for $28 million uh, for a tourist on his. This particular flight, I think, uh, other than the pilots, has uh, you know Virgin employees on board, but the, since this, this spacecraft has successfully done this a, a handful of times, is there something other than Branson's outsized presence, and of course we're all interested in that, he's a very colorful uh, entrepreneur, that makes this particular flight that we're watching now different from the previous attempts? I think part of it is that you've got someone who is a billionaire who is oh. obviously Let funding a... Let me jump in. Let me a, jump in. A, a, uh, Richard Branson is talking right now, so I'm going to cut you off and we're going to listen. It's a complete experience for a lifetime. And now I'm looking down at a beautiful spaceport. Uh, congratulations to everybody for, uh, for creating such a beautiful, beautiful place. Congratulations to all our wonderful team at Virgin Galactic for 17 years of... Well, I didn't realize that we were actually going to be able to hear from Richard All right, so I'm so happy we in mid-flight. That is amazing. It also makes my point about it being a bit of a, a television show. Jeff, uh, pick it up, please. Not sure we still have audio contact. Oh, yeah. How, yeah, and I think, you know, the point you were making before we heard from, from Richard Branson, I think is that someone is, is paying and, and funding uh, uh, sort of an adventure to space, and now he's sort of putting his money where his mouth is, and he's actually experiencing it, sort of to give that confidence to other people who are wondering if this is safe or if this is something viable. Well, he's up there, and I, I, I guess it would be the first time a an owner of a privately 
government-run uh, rocket company is, is is taking the ride himself. Right. Just to give our viewers an update, it, uh, the Virgin Galactic flight is now at 22,000 feet uh, and descending. Uh, it doesn't look like a dramatic descent, but obviously the thing is moving uh, very quickly. And look, I think I got you got to give credit to these entrepreneurs, Bezos, who wished uh, Branson lots of luck this morning before the launch, and Branson himself uh, for being pioneers. Both of them made their fortunes in other businesses didn't have to do this, but there is a strain of thought. I mean, I, like everybody else, I'm wondering, you know, private companies doing what NASA used to do exclusively. It, it does feel like a new era, but is it kind of a diversion for rich people who can afford to buy these tickets? Uh, is it going to lead, we don't know obviously fully the answers here, but is it going to be uh, more of a fun thing for people who have a lot of money as opposed to leading to a more deeper exploration of space and the planets? I mean, I think, uh, you know, if you, you go back in history and you look at, uh, uh, you know, aircraft, commercial aircraft, I'm sure there were similar conversations about that happening, too, that it's yeah. for the rich and the affluent. And, you know, here we have people now like me flying uh, for a work trip to come here to witness this historic moment. So uh, I think the competition is good because it obviously will make the companies better. And, you know, of course, things are expensive when they first start out. An iPhone was very expensive when it first starts out. but. A lot more people have iPhones now, same with laptops or any technology. So uh, very historic moment. Uh, it's, it's hard to put into words being out here and hearing the excitement and uh, knowing what could be next for the future. Yeah. You know, as somebody who grew up during the U.S.-Soviet space race and the, tra the great uh, American moment in 1969 when man first walked on the moon and then, of course, all the subsequent You're Apollo right flights, I'm used to the sort of choreography of seeing a capsule separate from the main craft and then splash down in the water. One of the things, and perhaps you can walk our viewers through it, is the way in which this is actually going to make a landing. And I think this landing will get much, much more attention than the previous ones simply because of Branson's presence on that spacecraft. This symbol is also yeah, so this is, is, is sort of almost two uh, aircraft, if you will. You know, it took off like an airplane would, and that space uh, rocket that ended up going to space was in the middle of these twin fuselage airplanes. So it took off like an airplane, and you know, some people remark, uh, you know, that wasn't as exciting as I, as you know, they thought it would be. But once it hit that 50,000 uh, uh, foot mark, then the rocket was released and took off to space. So now it's coming back in, and it's supposed to kind of be coming into the atmosphere sort of like this, with the underbelly taking the brunt of, of the gravity and, and the pull and the burn that's coming in back into the atmosphere. And then it'll land like a plane or a space shuttle. It's just obviously uh, and much smaller. So it's, it's, it's sort of a mixture between a, a, you know, a rocket and, uh, and an airplane. They're calling it a space plane. Yeah, I mean, it's one of, there's so many uh, unique things about this that makes it so fascinating beyond what you described as the battle of the billionaires. And we should point out, even though there's been some success uh, with this particular spacecraft, I mean, this is not without risk. I mean, you, you talked about somebody putting their money or their many billions of dollars where their mouth is. Uh, it's not exactly a routine thing yet. The technology is not been tested for years. I mean, it has been in the terms of they had to feel ready to launch. And NASA does not regulate this, right? Other than uh, the risk to people on the ground if something were to go wrong, uh, anybody who gets on these spacecraft, whether it's Branson, Bezos, or space tourists who buy a ticket, uh, know full well that this is not like getting on a cross-country flight from New York to L.A. No, it's certainly not, but I think what separates Virgin Galactic from some of the other rocket companies we're, we're hearing about is that they have already, as you mentioned earlier, taken people on a similar ride and brought them back 500 down, feet. Uh, safely as we await Sir Richard Branson landing well, here. In we're waiting right now, so. 500 feet above uh, the landing zone. Let's, let's be quiet for a moment and watch. Main gear touchdown. And we're going to hold it just like this for a minute before bringing the nose down. You can see they're already celebrating inside there. And the nose is coming down now. Nose gear touchdown. And braking.
Well, it looks like a picture perfect landing, a smashing success. I've been on plane landings that were a lot bumpier than that. Look at uh, that incredible drone footage here as we come in. And there is full stop. Uh, the crowd there, I'm sure, very happy, Jeff Paul. And we did get to see that shot of Richard Branson kind of <laughs> clapping his hands together, knowing that he's just completed this historic flight. And um, just watching those pictures was something when you consider all the technology and the hard work and the risks involved. And now we're looking at the plane having successfully completed its landing. Your thoughts? Yeah, a, a 90 minute flight, a very historic one, and, and he's back down on the ground. It's pretty surreal to think that, you know, in an hour, hour and a half ago, we watched him walk out of here, uh, get in an SUV and head out to space. And now he's back down on Earth in, in the matter of about an hour and a half, what would be a typical movie. Um, so it, it's incredible just to see this, this experience, uh, to see, uh, you know, the technology, how far it's come. And as you mentioned, Sir Richard Branson has been working on this for years and years and years. And finally, he gets a chance to, to experience something that he has invested uh, countless dollars in. And now other people uh, soon, as they have booked tickets, will get to experience something similar. Yeah, it's got to be an absolutely thrilling way to spend some time, even though it's described as being on the edge of space. I mean, we're talking about 50 miles up. Uh, and of course, the... Uh, the effects of gravity and then the effects of feeling weightless, even though you're not weightless, uh, is really something. And I think uh, I think everybody was cheering for Branson and that flight. And I think there'll be a similar reaction when Jeff Bezos uh, goes up in his rocket. Uh, it's really something to watch these historic pictures. Jeff Paul, appreciate your doing yeah. the duty there and, and keeping us posted.